Good morning. I don't know why the British said every day when you wake up you say good morning. Because there are some bad mornings. Good evening. Which means there are some bad evenings. In life, there are always dark evenings and morning, dark mornings. And uh, we Christians, we are not also immune from those circumstances. The Bible speaks about Christ Oh God, blessing even non-believers and to us believers. We have some commonalities for us believers and non-believers. We eat the same they eat. We sleep the way they sleep. We cry the same way we cry. We mourn the same way they mourn. They desire to put on dress. We also want to put on dress. They want children. We also want children. Outwardly, we are the same. And that's why the apostle said, Peter, Jesus, Yesu, we have forsaken all. What do we have from you? What can we get after our loss? What should we gain from following you? We have given our homes, we have given our children, we have given our husbands and wives. And Jesus said, no, no, yes, so don't be like the Gentiles. Don't be like them. For also them, they desire the same thing you desire. But he said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. We are controlled by all these things that follow us. When God made man in his image he created man to control and have dominion. But the moment man made an exchange of God to, to sin, then everything turned the way around. Things began to devalue the human life. Things began to control man who was supposed to control them. And then things became, became to be small gods instead of God himself. And God became less important in the lives of people. And this morning we want to see that how we can never make God less. 
ntabwo dushobora kugabanya imana yiriyo we cannot make god in the same degree as our needs or our environment ntabwo dushobora guhwanya imana ngo ingane nibyo twifuza cyangwa ibidukikije we are talking about blessings and blessings turavuga kumigisha imana but why are we speaking of blessings ese kubera iki tuvuga kumigisha why people us who are being driven by blessings instead of the blessed one because there has been gatebe gatochi things have turned the other way around nuko ibintu byabaye gatebe gatochi cyangwa byaricuritse instead of seeking the blessed one we are seeking blessing aho kugira ngo dushake utanga umugisha turi rukankira imigisha we will never understand the true blessing until we go back to original understanding of what do blessing is nero ntago tuzasobanukirwa neza imigisha cyari cyo tudasubiye ku isoko and that's why today's teachings mpamvu inyigisho y'uyu munsi uh, have reduced god iravuga ngo twagabanyije imana in our preaching today in our pulpits ndetse mu kugisha kwacu in our most of the books that we read in the bookstores ndetse no mu bitabo byinshi dusoma aho babicururu we have reduced god twagabanyije imana to the level of our needs ndetse tuyinganisha nibyo twifuza to the levels of our desires urugero rw'ibyo twebwe twifuza and because of that rero kubera ibyo ngibyo that has shaped our understanding about god ibyo rero nabyo byahinduye imitekerereze ne n'imyumvire yacu ku mana god is not reduced to our desires and needs zero imana ntago ihwanye nibyo twifuza cyangwa our needs and our desires zero ibyo dukeneye nibyo twifuza can be baptized as our own blessings eh dushobora kubyita nk'imigisha yacu ku gitsi so my god and your god zero imana yanje ni imana yawe can never be reduced to the level of your needs ntago bishobora guhwana nibyo wifuza God is more than your need. Imana irenze cyane ibyo ukeneye. God is more than my wants. Imana irenze cyane ibyo nifuza. That even shapes our theology, our understanding about God. Ibyo ndetse bihindura n'uburyo twumva Imana yariyo. When we hear about preaching today, take iyo twumva receive inyigisho z'uyu munsi bwa ngo ni mwakire receive wo mwakire receive ni mwakire that shapes our understanding about god that what god only gives is what we get from him ibyo rero bigira ingaruka ku myumvire yacu y'Imana tukuva ku Imana ihwanye nibyo ngivyo so blessing are all these needs that we want rero imigisha igahinduka ibyo bintu byose twifuza i want a car ndashaka imodoka i want a house ndashaka inzu i want a new suit ndashaka ikote i want a new shoe ndashaka inkweto nsha i want i want i want i want i want i want ndashaka ndashaka these are the things we call blessings ibyo nibyo twita imigisha but Today ariko uyu munsi don't live for your god ntugahwanishe imana yawe and minimize your god cyangwa se ngo uyigire ntoya to the level you with your outdated suit outdated shoes outdated shirts outdated ties ero nk'imyenda yataye gihe n'inkweto n'ibindi bitandukanye When you go to the shopping malls yo ugiye nko guhaha women are good in shop we know shopping even us men eh abagore ndetse nabagabo dukunda guhaha ibintu bitandukanye what is the latest dress ukaba wibaza ngo ese ikanzu ya nyumije zwe ho is the latest style of shoes eh ese ni zihe nkweto ubu ngubu zigezwe ho and that drives our desires ibyo nibyo bisunika ibyo ngibyo twifuza and we go in prayer noneho tukajya mu masengesho god imana if i can only get that style of shoe 
Then people will know that I serve a living God. You are putting your God on the level of a style that one day, in a year, in a month, will be outdated. Our God is not outdated. Some of us we have suits in the cupboards that are outdated, out of fashions, you think God can also be leveled to the level of your suits and shoes? Some of us we have suits in the so this morning, let's not level our God to our needs. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 3, I begin with that for a reason. Instead of the sequences of the scriptures that I had desired. Let me, let's start with Matthew 5 verse 3. He says, blessed or oh, happy all oh, to those that should be envied. In, in translation, just translate. Amplified version said, blessed. In amplified version, uh, he says, I am blessed. I am happy. I am to be envied. I am spiritually prosperous. With a life joy. And satisfaction in God's favor. And salvation. Regardless of their outward conditions are the poor in spirit the humble who rent themselves insignificant to theirs is the kingdom of God this scripture changes the way we think about the blessedness Jesus said I want to tell you the kind of people that are blessed that are supposed to be envied that are spiritually prosperous that have found the favor of God and his salvation regardless of their outward conditions when you read the beatitudes something unique about these scriptures Jesus is concerned about the inward condition than outward condition he's speaking about the significance of what happens the inside than what is outside he says blessed are they that thirsty and hunger for God's righteousness for theirs is the kingdom of God so there's so many misconceptions about the blessedness. What I can call the prospered. That we are prospering. Or what we call the, the uh, prosper. Prosper gospel, the gospel of prosperity. That the only way to understand that I'm blessed is when I have. And some of the scriptures that we so much caught and hold on are some of the misconceptions and taking the scriptures out of context and we stand on what God did not stand on we confess with positive 
confessions and say I confess this because that's what the Bible says. But confessing something that God did not mean. Trying to make things align to your desires and my desires. Friends, if I am no man, if I if I use physical means to reach a certain thing, I don't need to tell people that it was God. No. This is me. If I fail, you say I have failed. But I will never. And we are not supposed to take the word of God to support your claims which are unbiblical. If I don't keep time, for an engagement because you are not keeping time don't say all things work together for those who believe in Christ you are late you slept late you dressed late it is your fault it is your sin but I don't have the power to take the word of God for my own personal claims. And that's why the Bible speaks about that. And that's why we have a problem in the church today. If I fail, I have failed. Full stop. There are no justification of the word of God to our faults, to our shortcomings. So, in Abraham, one of the things that we get a problem with the blessings. When you read Genesis chapter 12, Genesis chapter 15, Genesis 17, Genesis 22, this is a covenant of Abraham. All of us, we are sons and daughters of Abraham. And many of us claim, we claim the blessings of Abraham. How many of you claim the blessings of Abraham? I claim the blessings of Abraham. I am a child of Abraham. How many? Raise up your hand. What are some of the promises of Abraham? I want you to understand critical understanding of the word of God. What did God tell about Abraham? I will do what? I will. Repeat, brother. <laughs> God says, Abraham, I will bless you. I will. What is another pro uh, promise? I'll make you great. I'll make you a great nation. Out of you shall come a blessing to the nations. God's specific promise to Abraham was for Abraham. But within that promise, there is a promise that is linking us through Abraham that connects us to Abraham through Christ. But the problem is this. When you read Galatians chapter 3, this is very, very interesting. Chapter 3, verse 14. Now, this covenant promise of Abraham, we confuse it 
Uh, to As a covenant uh, of material prosperity. Uh, and so many times when we claim the blessing of Abraham because you want because I want I begin to claim Abraham's promise which was originally given to Abraham I am not Abraham within the promise of Abraham there is a small statement there is one promise that I connect with that covenant Galatians chapter 3 verse 14 says somebody read it says this is a promise what am I saying this so many of us we caught this word the promise of the covenant and we confuse it with material blessing God when God blessed Abraham I think he wasn't even thinking about materialism because the essence of the blessed God to Abraham was that seed that was going to come out of Abraham that out of Abraham all nations shall be blessed so when we want to unpack the promises of God or prosperity or blessing we so much stick on this covenant of Abraham and so many times we caught these Galatians chapter 3 verse 14 but we forget verse 15 Brother Moses read it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, now listen. Where does materialism get connected to that scripture previously saying he has redeemed us from the curse of the law but he says the reason why we got connected is that we may have the spirit of faith through Christ. So, one of the key covenants of God to us through Abraham was that through Christ we get connected we get the promise of the spirit and this is the reason why I'm saying this is that we may get rid of our thinkings, our notions that the covenant of Abraham only is given to us as a fulfillment, as the provisions of materialism. That's why every time preachers will say, do you want the covenant? God will make you great. You want to be successful. You want to be what? We call these scriptures without forgetting other scriptures that says, no, God's mind was more than those statements he gave Abraham. Another thing. 
Jesus Christ, the Bible speaks about taking every curse. He took all sickness and disease some people also add on poverty and disease Have you ever heard those preachers? Jesus Christ did not only take your sin. Did not only take the curses. But also he took your poverty. You know that he took your poverty. That he may make you rich. Have you ever had those quotations? Have you had those quotations? How many of you have had those quotations? He has taken away my poverty to make me rich. There are for brothers. You are not supposed to be poor. At the cross of Jesus Christ, my poverty was taken. That I may be rich. I want to be the best billionaire in the city. Because Jesus Christ took away my poverty. Are you real? Real serious with what you are saying? Did real the apostle Paul mean physical poverty? Was Jesus Christ more concerned by your physical poverty or our spiritual poverty? We hear preachers speak same statements. That is in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9. Paul says, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9. Kuko muzi ubutunzi bw'umwami wacu Yesu Kristo uko yari umutunzi maze agahinduka umukene kubwanyu kugira ngo ubukene bwe bubatungishe. Aha. So when we call this scripture, because we crave after material things, because I want to to satisfy my ego, because we preachers we so much want to suck believers, we caught this word of God. For you know brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, he was made, he was rich. But now, he became poor for us that he, that we might become rich. And so, with that word of God, we forget what Paul had in mind. That the emphasis of Paul was not physical poverty. That is the problem with we preachers, brethren. We take the word of God out of context. We said you want to be rich. Do you want to be rich? Christ has done it. Be rich. You be. Oh. And we think 
the death of Jesus Christ. You see, what I'm saying, I'm not saying God does not care about our needs. Neither God would want us to live in absolute poverty. But we need not confuse the word of God with the most important things that are supposed to be for us. Not to confuse things. So when we hear preachers say that, we need to be careful that Christ has made you Indeed, Christ has done it. But let me tell you, poverty in Christ, physical poverty in the mind of Christ, I don't think it was there. I don't think riches were in the mind of Christ when he died at the cross. I don't think significance was in the mind of Christ. I don't think Christ in the mind of Christ he wanted glory. I don't think in the mind of the death of Jesus Christ he wanted us to feel as good. Heaven and earth will pass away and all things therein. Cause are made from dust. These gadgets, most of these are got from Congo, these minerals. From, from dust, man shall return. Dust, iron shall return. If we emphasize the most not important is significant, what will happen? Another problem with the church of Christ. Mark chapter 10 verse 30. Mark chapter 10 verse 30. He says, you can read my brother, 1030. There is another idea that we so much try to make our things fall in line with the word of God. Mark chapter 10 verse 30. I called it Manguhe. God have given you and therefore give me back. Compensate me. I've given you, you remember what Jesus said? A seed of 30, a seed of 40, of 60. He says about the seeds. A man went and sowed seeds. There was an increase of 30. There was an increase of 60. There was an increase of 100. There is a problem. Of us preachers to you. And Jesus said. You have left your mother. You have left your sister. And because you have left them. God is faithful. He will compensate. When you give ten dollars. Or ten. 10,000 francs God will give you 100,000 francs Brethren 
Those that are giving a hundred thousand stand here. Because when you give ten thousand people, because God says, if you give this amount of money, God will translate that and multiply that equivalent or multiplying to what you gave. There are four brothers stand here. 10,000 here. 50,000 here. 5,000 here. But for those with 2,000 you can stand, we can sit over there. They call these scriptures about the law of compensation or the law of, of sowing and reaping. Forgetting that even Jesus Christ said in Luke that when you give, don't expect any return. Because when you give with a copy mind, with the mind of saying, I'm giving, but I want to be attached on what I've given. Lord, I'm giving 5,000 here. Because you said in your word, give, and we shall reap 30. I expect to have 30,000 or 50,000. That's where believers, we confuse them. Uh, they give their things in expectations for returns. We turn the gospel into business transaction. No, no, to go in, to go One month is gone. Two months is gone. Six months is gone. God, where are the returns? Ah, those things of Varokore. Why are we confused people that God is controlled by the laws of compensations? Indeed, God will reward you. But let's not be controlled by this mind within our spirit, within our hearts. A cheerful giver. God will bless with no expectations of returns but at a point in time God will provide let's not confuse these things in our mind no a man I've given you therefore God you remember I gave you this much where are you it has delayed. Friend, don't value, go minimize God to the level of our needs and answered prayers. Let's close our eyes. There are some people. Jesus said, if you have faith like a mustard seed. You shall pray to this mountain, be thou removed. And it shall be thou removed. But we confuse this kind of faith. We commanding force. With commanding force. We commanding prayer. Uh, to twist the hand of God to meet our needs. Faith is not a force. 
I can say faith is not just a tool to use. A tool to use my human needs. Brethren, you don't have faith. On a belief. We preachers, we use to twist believers and turn them to force the hand of God to meet their needs. And we caught James, the book of James. That you do not have because you ask not. Oh, we preachers were good in those statements. You, the reason why you don't have this is because you don't have faith. The reason why you don't have it's because you have no faith. You don't pray. But we forget the second statement. He says the reason why we don't have answered prayer is because our prayers are driven by our own passions. Oh, the church today. We are driven by our passions. Let me tell you, brethren, if it is your passion, Work for that. If you want a shoe, work as hard as you can and buy the shoe. Because it is your passion. But don't go into prayer and say, God, I want that shoe. I want that shoe. Oh God, why don't you give me that shoe? Those are your passions. Stop praying your passions. Work hard as you can and pay your own shoe and tell people and say I bought this shoe but when a miracle happens beyond your imaginations and your thinking tell people I prayed I had trust in God I did not know where it would come from but God in his on provisions answered prayer we need to testify on what God does and when it is through your power <laughs> you see God in the book of Deuteronomy he says when you get these things know that it was through my power that gave you to get wealth which means there are things that you can work on there are things that only you need the help of God Otherwise, we would be like Sophia. And they take us in every area of the robots. Do what you can. And leave what you cannot in God. Let's not level God to our needs. No, no, man, if you don't do it, God, if you don't do it, then God, I will never believe in you. You are leveling God at that level. God, if you don't have this, no, I, I will never believe in you. You are leveling God at that level. We need to confess and ask God for forgiveness. How dare we, we, we level God to the level of our needs? Lastly, 
chapter 6 verse 17 and 18 of first Timothy. Muri Timotheo wa mbere bice bitandatu ku munongo wa 17 kujya kuri wa 18. He says, command those that are rich in this present world not to be arrogant. No to put their hope in wealth which is so uncertain but to put their hope in God. Wihanangirize abatunzi bo mu byiki gihe abatunzi bo mu byiki gihe kugira ngo be kwibona cyangwa kwiringira ubutunzi butari ubwo kwizigirwa ahubwo biringire imana iduha byose itimana ngo tubinezererwe. Who richly provides us with everything for our own enjoy, enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. When your season of material wealth arrives, brethren, when that time comes, accept the provisions of God. Have you ever seen a person who is so rich and wealthy? Paul says, don't be arrogant. You've never seen a person you grew with and he's on the level, he was on the level A and he's on the level B. And do you know what happens? He becomes so arrogant. He says, do I know you? You look like somebody that somewhere <laughs> ah, you grew up in the same village. Ah. <laughs> he was, she was not having one meal at a time. He had one meal. But now she's driving. See, you are a small shoe there. <laughs> ah, you, you are too smelly. You know? Arrogance. Eh? Have you ever seen those people? Arrogant. Paul says, brethren, when something happens, when your needs are met, don't be arrogant. But remember, remember the one who brought you from the bush there. You had no name. You are putting on a jikwen, a jikwechi, a jikoy, one of the jikoy, one drink. You are putting on sandals. And you become too arrogant. No, 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 no. Remember the same God who gave it to you. He says, don't be arrogant. But put your hope in. He says, but don't put your hope in what you have. He says, don't put your hope in what you have. Be rich. In doing good things. Be generous. To one another. The greatest thing man can do is to do something good to somebody. Yesterday, I went as I finished up in the, in the service today. Yesterday, I went in a, in a wedding. And uh, somebody, the, 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 the bride, the, the bride, Says, I thank so and so who gave me something to go through school. I listened. I was surprised. Because I know the person who gave money. For this young woman, do you think she was sincere? 
Ese utekeza ko ibyo yavuze yarabikuye ku mutima? Never forget where you came from. Ntukaje wibagirwa aho uturuka. Don't be arrogant when things change. Don't be arrogant when your status change. Don't change your voice. And start of walking. Let's not put God at the level of our needs. Father in the name of Jesus Thank you for your word Forgive us for putting you at the same level of our needs and our desires and sometimes we align your word with our needs and sometimes we align your word with our needs Jesus your redemption was more than what our physical needs can are because we are sinners because we are fallen beings because you know our weaknesses you know all these things that we desire day by day that's why you said don't worry for you are more precious than sparrows Help us today, O oh God. Even in our giving. Even in our service. Oh God, help us. Save us from this syndrome of compassions. What can I gain? But let our hearts be driven by your love. We thank you, Lord. And I'm praying, Father, if there is anybody here that have never believed in Jesus Christ, remember when Paul says, I counted all these things but dank. He made an exchange of his pride, exchange of his rebellion. To Christ Jesus. I'm praying, Father, that this morning if there is anybody who wants to make a commitment to you, O oh God. To surrender their lives. To surrender their emotional needs. To surrender their emotional challenges. To say, God, today I surrender to you because you you are all in all that I need. That you took our sins, you took our rebellion. You took everything that was against us. I'm praying, Father, that today we may make that decision of making the right choice of making God above every need and our desires for you are a God who can do 
Ushobora. Exceedingly. Ukora ibirenze cyane. Abundantly. Ibirenze cyane. Above all we can ask and think. Ibyo dushobora gusaba no gutekereza. Through the mighty working power that worketh in us. Kandi biciye mu mbaraga zikomeye zikorera muri twe. In Jesus name. Mu izina rya Yesu. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah.